Management. My name is Joy Jagade and I'm 20 years old. I currently work at a top law firm in the country and consult on a regular basis with the best management consulting firm in Sierra Leone. How did I get here? I made a habit of learning for learning's sake. Among my friends, I'm notorious for a little irritating habit. It's not very irritating, just a little. I ask way too many questions. I want to know everything about anything. And today, I have one question for you, something I'm very curious about. When you were in school, or if you are in school, how many times did you study a textbook, dig into a subject, take an extra course, just because you wanted to know? Just because you were curious? Just because, well, I like to know what this is really about. You are not trying to get a grade, you are not trying to look good on your CV, you are not trying to get skills for a job, you just wanted to know. How many times? Who has ever done that? Uh, not so many hands. Okay, what about outside school or after school? You started something, dived into a subject, not because you had any practical use for it at the moment, you were just curious. Okay, a few hands. Thank you. It's not something we do often. It's not something many people do at all, in fact. Because we just want to get the grade, pass the class, get a degree, get a job. That's it. We live in a pretty utilitarian society wherein we go to college to get a job, exercise to get fit. We don't usually do things for themselves. We just do it as a means to an end. And we apply the same thing to learning. We don't learn the subject because we want to know, because we're curious, because of fun. We just want to get a grade. And learning is never, it's never the end in itself. It is always just a means to an end for so many people. But it should be an end. Intellectual curiosity is becoming, or has become, one of the greatest determinants of personal satisfaction. And along with your intelligence or emotional intelligence, it's also a great determinant for your career success. And by intellectual curiosity, I mean a persistent and deep desire to know. It means you ask, why is she wearing that dress? It means you ask, why is this head down? It means you ask, what causes the waves on the beach you love walking? Or why is my voice louder when I speak into the microphone? You just want to know. I'm not worried for asking those questions because regaining your curiosity is probably the best fun decision you can make this year. And I say regaining because we used to have it. When we were children, we asked so many questions, we wanted to know everything. We were learning about the world around us, everything was interesting, we wanted to know. And some studies have shown that for really curious children, they ask almost 73 questions a day. None of us do that. We don't even have that. So why should we go back to that? Why should we ask questions? Why should we be curious? Why should I look into astronomy when my daily life revolves around making arguments in court? Why take that extra course in college when it's not going to earn me any marks or add anything to my degree? Why? I'm going to give you four reasons. The first is creativity and innovation. A 2017 study done in the US shows that there is a positive and direct link between curiosity and creativity. And it goes this way, you have curiosity, you ask questions, and so you seek information. And that leads to idea generation. You get so many ideas, and it leads to, voila, creativity. You have out of the box ideas, because you started asking questions. That's what the study shows. And one of the former scientists of the world, he developed the theory of relativity, Albert Einstein. People say his IQ is estimated at 160, and some people assume it's why he developed so much. But he has a different opinion. According to him, I have no special talents. I am only passionately curious. He doesn't think his IQ is why he was such a great scientist. He thinks his curiosity was the driver for all of that. So creativity, and innovation. And there's a quote that goes this way, the spark behind the spark of every great idea is curiosity. The future belongs to the curious. Every invention we can think of answers the question, what if man could fly? We've got the aeroplane. What if I could talk to somebody 10,000 miles away? We've got the telephone. That was what curiosity did for us. And that is what curiosity is going to continue doing for us. A second reason why you should be curious, why you should learn for learning's sake. Because of critical thinking, 
and the ability to see things from different perspectives. And what hot curiosity influences that is that curiosity makes you ask questions. And when you ask questions, you look at things more, you think deeper about things, you want to really understand. So you get critical thinking. And because you're thinking more about it, you seek different perspectives, you're asking questions. That's how curiosity helps critical thinking and uh, getting different perspectives. So in a 2016 study by, in the US also by Yale researchers, they show that curiosity helps you to cure bias. And bias is one of the major reasons why we cannot think critically because we're already biased. But with curiosity, so the experiment went this way, they found people who were scientifically knowledgeable, experts in their field, great knowledge. And they found people who had scientific curiosity. They just wanted to know. They were not necessarily the most knowledgeable people. So those who were knowledgeable, when they did the uh, questions, they found that they, were the most polar they had the most polarizing opinions because their knowledge did not necessarily change them. What it meant is that it just meant that they defended the opinions they already had. They found knowledge that supported the ideas they already had. But for those who were curious, they were able to see different perspectives, they were able to have better common ground and have a better idea because they were curious. So we might assume knowledge is what we need to change people's minds. But what we really need is open-mindedness, the willingness to ask questions, the willingness to truly know. So you might think, well, creativity is nice, critical thinking is nice, I don't really care about that, I just want to get my grade, I just want to get a job. But curiosity also helps with that also. So, gathering the grade. In the 2014 study also by Matthias Gruber, it shows that when you're curious, you have an active hippocampus in your brain. And an active hippocampus means active and long-term, effective long-term memory. When you're curious, you retain things longer, you learn faster. But what is even more interesting is when you get into the curious state, even things you're not interested in, you learn them faster, you retain them more, because your brain is curious. You're ready to learn, you want to know. So you want to get the grade, get curious. And if I were getting the job, maybe you won't accept what I've said or what research said. But in Sierra Leone, one of our most leading physicians, our leading physicians, the one who co-founded and pioneered the College of Medicine, and also one of the leading, one of the leading diagnostic clinics, Dr. Leonard Gordon Rees, in discussing how he made it in Sierra Leone, he has a single advice to young people. Ask questions. Want to know. Don't be afraid to ask. Be curious. So you want to get the grade. Sure, you want to get the job. It still starts with curiosity. It still starts with learning for learning's sake. And finally, there is well-being. There is satisfaction. Also, in the same 2014 study done by Matthias Gruber, another discovery that showed was that when you're curious, it activates a chemical in your body, in your brain, the, what is sometimes referred to as the pleasure chemical, dopamine. It's not really the pleasure chemical. What it really does is manages reward and motivation in your brain and pleasure. But when you're curious, it activates that chemical. So you're sort of more happy. You're happier when you're curious. And according to Tom Robbins, uh, curiosity, especially intellectual inquisitiveness, is the difference between those who are just going through the motions and those who are truly enjoying life. When you're curious, you have spice and variety. You don't get bored. You want to know things. You don't get easily down because there's always something new to discover. There's always something to look forward to. That's why you should be curious. But when, if you decide to do that, if you decide to ask questions, if you decide to want to know to be the person who takes that extra course in college, if you decide to be that person, it's not going to come easy. The first challenge you're going to face is from yourself, your own intellectual laziness. Many of us just want the answers. We're not willing to go through the process of discovering them for ourselves. We just want to know what the formula is for length time, length time spread. We don't want to know how do they get that formula. We just want to know, okay, just give me this. I'll find it out later. I'll find it out when I'm on the job. But if you're going to be curious, you have to be willing to spend the time and the effort understanding things yourself. For me personally, in school, it meant that when I had to study, I had to read five different articles around the topic before I actually get into the topic. 
It meant for me, I wanted to know the laws in different jurisdictions before I actually know the law in my jurisdiction. I just wanted to know. But when I actually got to study, I understood better, I understood more. The second challenge you're going to face is the feedback you get from other people. What people will say, what people will think. They'll think you're wasting your time. They'll think you're being too bookish. You're going to get all sorts of comments. If you're a student, they might call you Buka Washington, Sabi Sabi, Sensebot, Geek Nerd. There are all sorts of names. But those are compliments. They're compliments, they're things telling you that you're actually understanding the material. They're actually getting to know how to make those things work. There are compliments to your creativity and your ability to critical think, critically think, which is what employers will value later. So ignore it. And so, if you're going to be curious, if you're going to learn for learning's sake, there are things you must be willing to do. The first thing I'll suggest is become an intellectual rebel. Ask questions. When they tell you, this is what you should do. Ask them, why is that the best way I should go? When they tell you, well, I've decided this is how we should go, tell them how to ask them, how do they draw that conclusion? Ask questions. That's the default. Don't just assume because everyone has done it this way, this is the best way to do it. So in society, there's a common default we have. We really, we go to school, we go to college, we get a job, get married. I'm not against that default, but if you doubt the default, you have three things that happen. You either go through it, understand, and seek to understand why we should do that, and you believe in the default. You say, okay, yes, I should really go to school, I should really get a job and all of that. You believe in what you're doing, you're not just going through the motions. But you can also decide the default, it's wrong. And you might not find out what the new default should be, but then you know the wrong way that you should not go through. The third thing that might happen is you find a new way, a better way, when you doubt the default. Either way, you benefit. The second thing I'll suggest is be open-minded. Being open-minded is not just about uh, asking questions, reading another book, or watching another documentary. Being open-minded also involves listening to other people's opinions, hearing what they think, not just what, but why they think what they think. How do they get to their conclusions? And so if you're going to convince them or if you're going to agree with them, neither of which should, which should be your goal, if you just want to know, you have a better chance. And the last thing I would suggest is uh, regain your sense of wonder and follow it. That wonder you had when you were a child and you wanted to know everything about anything, regain that. I'm going to give you a challenge. When you go back home, when you look for the most boring thing you think you've ever encountered, look at it again and find three interesting things about it. Three. Regain your sense of wonder. But it's not enough for you to regain it, you have to follow it. So when you find yourself bored, when you find yourself thinking, well, I have nothing to do, look for something you find interesting and dive into it, no matter how small it is, no matter what it is. It might be, why do mosquitoes fly? Look into it. You find something, you have a deeper knowledge, you have richer perspective. So if you're going to be the person whose creativity and critical thinking is valued in her job and is being sought after, if you're going to be the student who truly understands her material and eventually gets the grade, if you're going to have a well-rounded and exciting life, I'll encourage you to learn for learning's sake. Allow your curiosity free reign. Thank you very much.